All right, well, hey there, everyone. This is Kevin. This is the next video lesson for you um, in this kind of introductory to options uh, course. And this one may be a little bit uh, the longer videos and the lessons, uh, just specifically because I want to talk about two entirely different schools of thought or trading methodologies when you trade options okay um, there are there are so many different ways to trade options and that is what kind of further adds to the complexity and the confusion and the ability to be overwhelmed with them and you know when you look at just a, a straight up price action chart like this I'm looking at the Russell 2000 on a day time frame. All right. I want to look at the SPX, S&P 500 on a day time frame. I want to look at the NASDAQ. I want to look at Apple. I want to look at Microsoft. I want to look at Netflix. I mean, you'll see every single one of these charts have a different appearance and a different look to them. And depending on what your your philosophy is, what your experience is, what your bias is, what your desires are. I mean, that really kind of comes into play with how you want to trade options. Um, you can't just start whipping trades on to let's see if they're going to work out. You really need to have a predetermined trade plan with every trade that you execute and you manage. And part of that trade planning, and, and I'm going to go into this in a lot more detail, uh, one of the later lessons, um, that trade plan needs to be constructed at the beginning, and you need to be preparing for actively managing an option trade that will require adjustments. It's not always going to require adjusting, but you need to know beforehand, up front, what you're going to do when a certain set of circumstances or when a certain scenario happens. And so I said all of that so that I can say this. There's two ways to trade options, directionally or non-directionally. All right. And the only way you're going to find out what fits your personality better is to trade them both. And, you know, right up front, I'm going to say when you start out trading options, most traders go right straight to trading straight calls and straight puts, all right? You go on something like Netflix, you go into, let me just show you an option chain on Netflix. These are all the trades that you can trade on Netflix, all the different weeks that they expire. You can go into a trade that's 46 days to expiration. You can buy a, a long call or a long put and you will make money if it goes up on the call side. You'll make money if it goes down on the put side. But right from the get-go, you are <clears throat> forming a directional opinion. So um, you really have to kind of create that mindset in the beginning. What are, what are your assumptions? Uh, am I looking to take a short here? Am, you know, I'm looking at a, a gap up after earnings and I want this gap to fill. You know, look at Microsoft right here. You've got divergence right here through these arrows, and uh, you've got earnings <clears throat> that missed. Uh, I'm sorry, they didn't miss. They actually beat earnings. They were estimated at 69 cents. The actual was 71 cents, and you had this massive gap down. So you have an open window gap that needs to fill, as well as some missed pivots above the divergence that is created. This is a great time to take a directional option trade. And uh, I actually did. All right. You'll see right there. I took uh, four contracts and I did a 43.45 debit trade. So <clears throat> the reason why I'm bringing this up is right off the bat, this is a directional trade. My opinion is I want this trade to move up. If it doesn't, I have my cutoff points underneath to where I will get out of the trade. All right. And I will show you that right here. That's my cutoff point. If it if a daily bar closes underneath 40, I'm out. I'm gone. And you know what? It's, it's not going to be a 100% loss. I will recover some of my 
debit, but it didn't work like I thought it would. So I'm not going to hope and pray and, and add to it and think it's going to come back. I'll just get out of it and I'll wait for the next setup. Now, <clears throat> that being said, right, then we just wait for the next divergence setup and we go in maybe a little bit bigger. And we still have the same assumptions and the same principles that we're following to reach up to the weekly, uh, monthly, um, daily, all these missed pivots, as well as this gap. So, you know, that mindset of am I trading directionally or non-directionally really has to be identified at the beginning. And when you identify that, when you accept that, that one style fits your personality better than another, well, then you start creating trades and constructing trade plans and managing trades around that bias. All right. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I uh, <clears throat> hope I didn't <laughs> ramble on too long about that. But uh, so directionally and non-directionally, those are two really completely different schools of thought. Um, me personally, I trade the bulk of my trading is non-directionally. I try and find ranges and I keep the market in that range and I manage trades that way. Um, the returns will not be as high as if you catch these nice directional turns or these directional moves. But in my opinion, for me and my personality, that works better. It's a little bit safer. The win rate's a little bit higher. Um, and I'm willing to sacrifice the percent gains in exchange for that. Um, so those two different schools of thought, really, uh, you have to... You have to identify in the beginning, and when you when you accept that you can trade both styles just in different percentages, well then you'll you'll understand why options, why they excite me, why I'm passionate about them, why I just absolutely love them, and uh, you know I hope you'll you'll come to appreciate and enjoy them as much as I do. So. You know, this, this particular Microsoft trade right here, I have no idea if it's going to work. You know, I, I, we'll just have to wait and see. But I know right up front, right off the bat, I can start doing some uh, analysis on it. And I can start saying, well, let's look at this from a daily time frame perspective. You know, I've got this massive gap that you know, most gaps fill. This is a nice, big, good company. It beat earnings. There's really no reason why it shouldn't have got punished this bad. You know, maybe it's because Apple's doing so well. I mean, I, who knows? But, you know, if you construct a trade that is centered around this, then what I'm going to show you here is this sideways view of a risk profile. And we'll get into this in more advanced courses and advanced sections later on. But I just want to show you, let's, um, I'm going to analyze this trade. This is a trade that was filled and it was executed. I'm going to analyze this trade. This is Microsoft. You'll see that I paid $40 per contract. So my maximum risk, look at this little green arrow or this green box down here, is $160 between now and April 18th. So if Microsoft closes anywhere underneath $43 between now and April 18th, this trade will be a 100% loser, all right? I don't want it to be a 100% loser. I want it to be a 100% winner. <laughs> but um, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. And uh, one of my later lessons, I'm going to show you two real live case studies. One was on Qualcomm. One was on IBM, where one was a big winner. One was a big loser. But, you know, they're not always going to work out. My, my point is you need to know up front. You need to construct your trade to plan accordingly that, um, I've got a lot of time for this trade to move up, and I believe that it should move up. And if it moves up here to $43 in the next, you know, between now and this little profit box that I've got drawn over here, anytime between now and then, I just have to get above this point right here for it to be a winning trade. If we get up here to $43, I'm going to remove and reduce my risk exposure to this trade. And you'll see right here, if we move up here to $43 like tomorrow or in a couple of days or in a week, I will have realistically gained 100% on this trade. It will 
it will be able to be closed for about $150 profit on $160 of margin. So, you know, I, I hope that you'll see that this is this is a very directionally opinionated trade. Um, it goes one way. It profits if we move up. It begins to lose if we go down. But if we get under $40, you'll see I'm going to cut it loose. I'm going to take a $40 loss. I won't take a full $160 loss. I'll take a $40 loss and I'll wait for the next set of divergences to show up. And in my mind, I'm basically taking a, a $40 risk trade to potentially make, you'll see up here, let me just slide this over. If we close anywhere above $45, which is what my short strike is, uh, we'll make $640. So right off the bat, you can see if I close, if I fill this gap, I close this gap, I've taken essentially $40 worth of true risk because that's what I've that's what I've told my mind. Uh, we get we get under $40 closing on a daily. I'm going to close the trade. It'll probably be about a $40 or a $50 loss, and uh, I'm taking a $40 or $50 risk to potentially make well over $600, $640. So I think that R to R, you know, I don't have to I don't have to win many of these to have a positive edge in my favor. And you'll see that with these options, this can be done. You can do this with one contract. This can be done for as little as $40. Of course, there's commissions to take into consideration, but you can position sizes to whatever size account you have. Okay, so that is a directional, that is a full on directional trade. I know what I'm willing to risk. I know what I'd like to make and I make my trade plan fit that mold. Compare that to, let me just show you, uh, I don't know, let's do this one right here. Let's do a, a T4 rut trade. It's been open since the 13th. Oh boy, here we go. Talking about all this non-directional, no opinion, market moving stuff. This trade was open way back here at this yellow arrow. I had no opinion whatsoever. I don't care where the market's going. It can go up, it can go down. I don't care. But I identify if it got up to 1220, I was going to do something. If it got down to 1170, I was going to do something. Well, what happened? It got to 1170 and I did something. So then when you when you make an adjustment, now that changes my assumptions, changes my opinion, and now I become um, vested into the camp of, well, now I'm no longer letting it go to 1220. I'm only going to let it go to 1200, but I'm also going to lower this from 1170 to 1140. So my new adjustment points have become 1140 and 1200. So I, <clears throat> I just kind of follow the market at this point and let the market tell me what I'm going to do. Um, the market's still going to tell me what I'm going to do on the Microsoft trade, but in this particular trade, when we got to this point, you'll see we didn't hit 1200, but I still made an adjustment. Well, I made an adjustment because I didn't like the way the trade was behaving. And the only way you get to know these kinds of things is by trading and getting time in front of the screen. All right. Um, you will learn when a market is just not acting right and you need to do something. And you will learn when you just need to kind of sit on your hands and let it do its thing. But this gray box is when I'm going to be closing this particular trade and it's either going to be a winner or it's going to be a loser. This edge, this hard right edge on the price is when all of these options in this sequence expire. Uh, on the 13th, Friday the 13th, which happens to be my birthday. All right. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> uh, these options will expire. So on this day, on the 18th or the 17th, these options, I can do nothing with them. I have to be out of them on this day, you know, anywhere in this range. So you'll see, I've just, I've kind of followed the market along. I've identified between 1140 and 1190. I'm going to do something and I'm going to um, manage this trade around that. And that particular trade, let me, I'll just, I'll bring it in and I'll show you what that one looks like. Again, this is something that is much more advanced it is for much later lessons. It's for those of you that enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, this particular trade, it's up a little over 100 bucks, 100 and some odd dollars. Uh, and it's on just about $2,000, about $1,900 worth of margin. 
Nothing to sneeze at. Those are terrible returns, right? But you do those kinds of returns month after month after month after month, and you'll see that while they may not make gigantic gains in an account in a couple of days, uh, over time, 1% a month, you can absolutely destroy this market. And we hit 1140, we hit 1190. That's going to be my next adjustment. And if I land anywhere in this range, it becomes a profitable trade. So that is a non-directional trade. I don't know where the market's going. I don't care where it's going. That is 180 degrees different than this trade. This is a directional trade. I want it to go up. All right. So that being the case, um, just know that it doesn't matter what chart it is that you're looking at. You can be looking at Apple. You can look at Google. You can look at, um, I mean, anything. You can look at Priceline. You can look at Netflix. You can look at, I don't even know what BABA, what is that, BABA? You can look at this one. I mean, you can look at any price chart you want to, and if the options are traded on it, you can create and construct a trade either directionally or non-directionally. Both have pluses and minuses, and the only way you're going to learn that is by getting your feet wet, jumping in <laughs> on demo mode, please, and uh, playing around with them, right? Trading them and seeing seeing what you like. But um, anyway, thanks much. That, uh, that'll end up this one here. The next video lesson I am going to, it'll probably be another long one, sorry. Um, hope you don't mind listening to my voice kind of ramble on. I, I feel like I'm rambling. I'm sitting in my living room right now talking to myself. <laughs> but uh, the next one I'm going to talk about time decay and, and you know why you really need to understand that and the differences between uh, both intrinsic and extrinsic value. This will be a really important lesson. This will be one that you know you may, for those of you that are brand new to options, you may have to listen to it a couple of times along with with reading about these different terms. Um, I know for me personally, when I started out, I really, I had a really super hard time grasping those concepts. And I, I don't know why it is. I, I just, the, I guess the way my brain is wired, I just, I couldn't get it. I just, man, I would read it and read it and read it. And I'd, I'd watch videos and I'd listen to it. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. And, you know, I finally did. And, you know, that's just what it takes. It just takes really determination and discipline on your part that uh, if you like this, you know, you can absolutely learn it. Um, so that one will come next. It'll probably be a little longer one too. And then uh, we'll just keep progressing through. And I, I really hope you guys are enjoying them and getting some value um, out of these. Um, you know, I, I love this stuff. And I know there's a lot of you out there that uh, will probably do very well at uh, learning more about them and adding them to your arsenal as well. All right, so thanks much. Have another one coming soon. Bye.